The couple that lived in the house that was severely damaged behind me tell me while many of their belongings were destroyed in the blaze, right now they're just grateful to be alive. Katie, I'm outside of a home next to West Fork High School where this huge tree behind me came down during the storm yesterday, hitting the electric wires across the street. Residents say while they're relieved no one was injured, a downed tree this size is never a cheap fix. When you're traveling on the highway like the one behind me, unfortunately sometimes you'll see junk left on the side of the road, like cracker boxes, water bottles, or Coke bottles. And that's why the Minnesota Department of Transportation is asking for your help to clean it up. Dozens of people are here outside of Mason City City Hall protesting a bunch of President Donald Trump's policies. One big concern, protesters tell me, is immigration. With March Madness happening, spring break, and St. Paddy's Day just around the corner, restaurants in our area are getting ready to serve a lot more food and beer the next few days. There's all kinds of fun happening here at Mason City Pride, from dancing to face paint. And the neat thing about it is this is the first Pride event here in a decade. While the snow is keeping some people busy working, others are using it to have a little fun. Are you ready? Let's go. Hannah, it's been a very difficult day for a handful of residents in Charles City after the shooting last night that took a man's life. I spoke with one family today and they tell me right now they're just trying to make sense of it all while law enforcement investigates. That's what it sounded like, just pop, 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 sound like little black hats. But what Josh Hagen quickly realized what he heard a few feet behind him near this dumpster wasn't fireworks, but gunshots. My wife came and looked out the window and said, no, there's a body on the ground. Hagen quickly called 911 to let them know shots were fired and someone was hit. He says his wife performed CPR on the victim right here where eventually officials laid a pillow for his head. And he wasn't responsive. Hagen says officials tell him the victim was 20 years old. He was transported to the Floyd County Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. The Charles City Police Department isn't releasing the name of the victim at this time. My wife's really scared and this just traumatized her. She didn't want to go outside now. She doesn't want to do anything now. It's tough. He says his family spent several hours at the police station until early this morning providing statements and just hopes they find the suspect. We left the police station at 1 o'clock. We, they brought us up to the police station to take statements from your wife of what we heard and everything like that. They talked to every bit person in the building. So, yeah, they went door to door. Officials say the suspect, Williams, is six foot seven, weighs about 250 pounds, and may be in a red 2006 Chevy Equinox with an Iowa plate DOW 568. Hannah? All his pictures, his, his wife, and all his pictures are gone off the wall. 83-year-old Fanny Foss lives in the building right next to where it's believed Sunday's fire started at Sunrise Homes in Sheffield. She says she'll really miss her neighbors being around. He was good-hearted. He was always nice company and nice to talk to. Foss is talking about Ed Nelson, a neighbor she also considers a friend. She says Nelson came to her door right after discovering a fire in his home. It severely damaged his place and four others. He told me further on that he had left something on the stove and he kind of neglected his supper. Foss is just glad everyone got out safely, including Nelson, who Foss says is in his late 90s. She took her elderly friend to the house across the road. That was a parent. He should be checked out. That's where Joyce Minders lives, and it's where emergency responders got Nelson oxygen. EMTs checked him out, and it was a parent. He should be checked out for smoke inhalation, I believe. The Franklin Emergency Management Coordinator says one person was taken to Franklin General Hospital due to smoke inhalation. Neighbors say that person was Nelson. Boy, oh, that really wiped it out, didn't it? Foss says thankfully some nearby nursing homes will give folks like those who lived in the Sunrise Homes a place to stay in case of a situation like this. They will take you for a certain limited of time, so that's great. That's good. <laughs>